Put your hand off my penis! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Let's take a look at another exclusive offering from Caviso, this time partnering for the very first time with Wee Knife on a collaboration. Now, most of you already know the Wee Knife packaging. You'll get the, uh, the Arrakis sticker. You'll get some chiclets. Your microfiber, suede-like microfiber cloth. Instructions, warranty info, and then your zippered pouch. And stickers, more stickers. Get this bad boy open, and even though you've already seen the pictures and it's not a surprise, here she is. This is the Wee Knife Praxis. Now, what makes this collaboration, this exclusive to Caviso Special is the fact that they've upgraded this into a premium status. It is a titanium frame lock. It's got S35 VN blade steel and they have added the thumb studs by request along with the standard flipper tab. Now when I say by request, if you don't know, there is a community tab on Caviso's website where you can participate and give feedback on any current knives that they have available there or any knife that you wanna see done by any brands that they partner with. And you can participate in polls. So let's say they put up a poll and say, hey, what do you guys think of the Praxis? You've bought it, how do you like it? What would you change? What would you like to see us do in the future? And you said, man, I want this thing to be anodized blue with a hand rub satin blade and keep it under $400. Boom. The more people pile on with the same types of requests, the more likely you're going to see that thing happen in the future. And that's one of the interesting benefits of shopping with Caviso. I love, love, love the creativity they put into that shopping experience. Now, what makes this knife unique to many other knives that you probably have in your collection? Well, first, I think it's important to start with the specs only because that's where I think the speciality of this knife really lies. You're looking at a big ass blade. Take a look at the specs here on the screen. It's a big, big, big knife. However, it's, oops, it doesn't stand up that way. It is slim. So that means now you've got that big beast of a knife that you can do pretty much anything with, but it's not an enormous burden to carry in your pocket. To give you some comparisons, let me lay this down and put this up against some typical compact to full-size EDC-style knives that are popular in the market. The Varga Knives VBR. A little bit smaller, but it weighs more than this, and I'll show you that in a second. Go into the Chavez 229, mine in the Mars Attacks theme that I had done up. Also, smaller, but because it's so much chunkier, it's going to weigh more. So let's get into that. Let's break out the scale. Put that off to the side. Let's go ahead and crank that bad boy on. The VBR weighs in at 5.1 ounces versus 3.8 ounces. That's a larger knife than this. So great for all those big cutting tasks, but it's easier to carry. 6.5 ounces. Oh my goodness. And again, 3.8 ounces. Now, as we compare it to other knives in a similar size, we'll bring out the PMP Aries, 
which is a massive favorite of mine. Now you see the overall length is just about the same. The Ares has just a slightly shorter blade. And then we'll bring out the PMP Berserker. Again, you're gonna find relatively identical in overall length. Actually, the blade length is just about the same as well. Now, what are the differences here in the weight, you might be asking. I don't know what you're really asking. You're probably asking why I always hit my damn tripod. Okay. The Berserker is a massive 7.6 ounces. The Ares is 5.5 ounces. And again, to remind you, 3.8 ounces. Utterly ridiculous. So now you've got a big boy in your pocket. You haven't paid a lot of money for it. You're looking at 212 bucks, 212.50, something like that. And it's so slim that it's going to be much, much easier to carry. Also makes it nice and slicey. So you've got a th thin blade stock and you've got a very high flat grind, which allows it to drop down to be a lot more slicey right there at the edge. So I think for a lot of people, this is going to be an eye opener because maybe you felt the need at some point to own some larger knives, but your problem with that was, well, man, they're so big and beefy and heavy and I just it just feels like a pain in the ass to carry around. It's laborious and what a pain in the ass. Not so the case with the Praxis. I really like the blade shape on this as well. This is a uh, very useful blade shape. Nice drop point on there. Pretty good action. Uh, nothing to write home about. It's not going to blow your mind like a lot of knives that we see. But this is also not broken in. So I still have to wear in that detent track. It has gotten a little bit smoother and faster just in the last, I don't know, hour or so that I was playing with it. Let's do the TLDW. Normally I do that before the specs, but I think the specs really were the most important part on this knife because big, yet not beefy, and easy to carry, that to me is the major selling point. Okay, TLDW, too long, didn't watch. For those of you who have a short attention span. Pros and cons on this knife for me. Pros, again, the, uh, the size to weight ratio, this is fantastic. Another pro is just the fact that it's made by Wee Knife. Wee has been doing some really, really fantastic work and the, the machining they're doing is great. Their actions are getting better and better and better. Very excited to see a slim but robust titanium frame lock available from them. Adding the thumb studs is going to add a lot of flexibility for a lot of people. Can I reverse flick this? Oh, yeah. So you can thumb flick it. You can slow roll it. You can reverse flick it. And you can flip it off the flipper tab. So you have some versatility there. And we've discussed this recently in a video I uploaded a couple weeks ago. Having the multiple methods of deployment is a real big plus for a lot of people. Even if you don't think it is, once you get a knife that allows you a lot of different options, you become... I don't know, you, you start to really, really enjoy it a lot more, and it becomes this thing that you start looking for as you're knife shopping. You have an extended backspacer on a notched frame that allows for lanyard to be tied on if you're a lanyard type of person, and you've got a uh, actually very functional pocket clip. It's not the prettiest pocket clip in the world, but it kind of fits this industrial look with this dark acid stone wash they've done throughout the entire knife from the frame all the way into that S35 VN blade. You've got ceramic bearings. You have a ceramic detent. You have a steel lock insert for steel on steel contact. And you have the over travel stop for the titanium frame lock. 
So you've got all the premium features that you would expect from a higher end Wii. And a higher end Wii is going to run you typically around 300 to 450 for one of the more premium knives. This being a Caviso exclusive and a collaboration directly with them means you get to save money. I don't remember the exact amount of money they listed on the website as your savings, but I think it was over $100 savings if I'm not mistaken. So you're getting a good price, you're getting a solid knife, and if you like that that rugged, tough, kind of post-apocalyptic look, this is going to be the knife for you. It is not flashy. It's not crazy. I really, really love the finish. Sometimes I like the more subtle finishes, so that's going to be another pro for me. Cons. Cons are kind of tough to come by on this one because it really is well-made. However, there are a couple of things. Some people might find it a little bit too slim for really hard work because you're going to be bearing down on it tightly and the slimmer the frame the more you're going to feel the contact areas even though they've chamfered the frame nicely and they've rounded off all the edges you do still feel them the jimping by the way is nice uh any other cons for me shape of the flipper tab could be a uh, a little i don't know more ergonomic. Maybe if it was beveled back just a little bit with that jimping on there, you'd feel less of the corner of the flipper tab as you're engaging it. It's not a big deal. It's not sharp at all, but it's just that you notice it and you feel it. And for some people, that may be bothersome. I think that's pretty much it for the cons. Let me really take a good look at this and see if I can think of any more cons. No, not really. I was wondering if the uh, pocket clip was resting on the lock bar relief cut, and it's really not. It's actually resting on the frame. So you shouldn't have any issues getting this back into your jeans pocket. So, yep, yeah, overall, uh, more pros than cons, and that's always a good thing. Now, if you're the kind of person that worries about sweating all over your knives when they're in your pocket because you work outdoors and stuff like that. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but I promise I will make this very, very brief. I want to thank those of you that have joined and become channel members. You are helping to support the channel and helping to continue the growth. And if you've been considering supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form, because I do not have channel sponsors, uh, I don't shill anybody's products, I don't get paid for anything, I don't do affiliate links, so everything is completely self-funded. If you'd like to help out and watch the channel grow and get more great content coming your way, please do consider becoming a member. Or you might be in an environment that will make things rust or corrode a little bit easier. I think you'll probably like this for a number of reasons. Uh, obviously, titanium frame lock, the titanium isn't going to rust or corrode. You've got ceramic bearings in there instead of steel, so they won't rust or corrode. And S35VN still has pretty darn good anti-corrosive properties. I mean, they're nothing crazy. It's not like Vanax Super Clean or something. However, it's not really a problematic steel. Now, do keep in mind that this is acid stonewashed. And when you stonewash anything, you're opening up the pores of the steel, and that could allow for some corrosion. I really don't think that you're going to have very much to worry about, to be honest with you, because it's S35VN. However, it is something to be made aware of in general for your knife purchases. You know, if, if you get a mirror polish blade, it closes the pores and makes it more corrosion resistant. When you bead blast and you stonewash, it opens up the pores a little bit uh, so that can make it a little bit more susceptible to corrosion than it would typically be for whatever steel that you're looking at. So just, you know, a little thing that I'm throwing out there. Um, they're also running this at, uh, I'm not crazy about this, 59 to 61 on the Rockwell scale of hardness. That's a very, very large, large gap. I'd rather see 59 to 60 or 60 to 61. When you jump from 59 to 61, it has tremendously different properties. And remember, you're getting that average, not on each individual blade, but you know, let's say they made 500 of these. Uh, maybe every 50 or every 100 knives that they heat treat and they temper and they get finished with, they're going to pull it and they're going to test it. And 
So out of all those batches, the average was between 59 and 61. Yours might be 61. You might have a crazy hard blade that's going to be uh, very, very good on wear resistance. Don't know. I just don't like such a large variance when, when I'm seeing it listed. So that's my overall uh, pros and cons on the knife. My personal thoughts, I really like the fact that the days that I feel that I really want to carry a, a really large, not really large, but a larger knife, that I won't feel burdened by it because it's slim, it's fairly lightweight, and it's going to be easy to carry. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything either from other knives in my collection that may cost more or be a little bit more, I don't know, exclusive in some way because it's got a nice finish to it. I happen to like these darker tones in a lot of knives. Not everything has to be flashy. Not everything has to be hand-rubbed satin and mokutai and stuff like that. And I really like that it feels solid. Once this deploys and you hear that thing hit the blade stop, there is a very solid thwack. There is nothing, even though it's thin and it's for its size, fairly lightweight, there's nothing about it that feels delicate in any way, shape, or form. So it's going to feel like a, a good solid work knife. It's going to be the size of a good solid work knife. You're not going to be limited to those bigger cutting tasks. Maybe you've got 30 moving boxes that you have to cut down for recycling and you just don't want to have a, a, a tiny little blade cutting through all that. You've got a nice big knife that you can get a good grip on. You can get good leverage on, especially when you choke up into the choil. And you've got a nice slicey blade with a good steel that's going to do that job. And it didn't have to be some big, giant, crazy, beefy overbelt knife. And, you know, y'all, like you know, I like my beefy knives. You know, I really do. However... There are times that having a lighter weight knife is going to be more attractive to you. The more, the easier it is to carry, the more often you're likely to carry it. So that's a big, big plus for the Praxis. All right, I'm out of here for now, guys. Thank you for joining me. As always, look down in the description below. You'll see a direct link to this knife where you can purchase it from the website directly. I do not use you know, affiliate links and stuff like that. So you can read into that link all you want. You see, it's just a direct link. There's no special code or anything for my name or my channel. So just making it easy for you guys to pick it up. You can click the link and go straight to it. Enjoy, and I'll see you on the next video.